the tour of Britain. Dundee, the city of discovery. She hasn't done anything like this before, though. The pride of Scotland's east coast plays host to the start of the third Kellogg's tour. Some of the best riders in the world will be here tomorrow for the opening prologue time trial. Right now, we've got the place to ourselves. Captain Scott's famous old ship Discovery home again and centrepiece in a city enjoying something of a renaissance. Hello there. So, 500 miles, three countries, eight cities, a genuine tour of Britain, a cycling bonanza in fact, free and you're all very welcome. We're going to be taking in some glorious scenery en route. We've already had a taste in fact of what Dundee has to offer, but this tour for the cyclists at least, no piece of cake. More about the riders and the route a little later, but first of all, let's bring ourselves right up to date with what's been happening in the world of cycling since July's Wincanton Classic. The World Series reached round six in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, where the Dutch champion Franz Massen scored a lone victory after a late escape, but Sean Kelly finished third to take the overall lead in the competition. A week later, the professional circus had moved to Canada for the first time, and the seventh World Cup event of the season found a surprise but deserving winner in Jörg Müller, the ex-Swiss champion and teammate of Sean Kelly. The Irishman finished fifth and held on to the individual lead, but he had no answer to Charlie Monty in the white here and the American Greg LeMond at the finish in Montreal. And this was the situation after seven races with Kelly keeping the lead he took at Newcastle. The series then went to Spain two weeks ago where the Austrian Gerhard Zdrobelec won in San Sebastian. There was no change on the leaderboard, but there was last week in Switzerland when Canada's Steve Bauer finally won the classic race he's tried for since turning professional in 1984, the Championship of Zurich. Bauer, disappointed in Montreal, made a late run for the finish and no one had a reply. Sean Kelly didn't score in those who finished just behind. So with three races to go, this is how they stand. Bauer's victory moving him to second with Franz Masson and Kelly retaining a 13-point lead. Also, many congratulations to Sean Yates, who became the first Briton to win the Tour of Belgium by a single second. And Greg LeMond, him again, Yesterday, he won the World Championship for the second time to add to his great tour win. Sean Kelly, by the way, was third. Well, that's the current situation then as we come here for the Tour of Britain. We've got a super field. It's a very open race, difficult to predict winners, but Phil Liggett's got one or two ideas. Malcolm Elliott is the fast rising star of British cycling. That's if he isn't already shining brightly after his magnificent points victory in this year's Tour of Spain. Malcolm became the first British rider to do this, winning two stages in the process. And since then, he's just carried on winning all season. Sadly though, he was forced to miss the Tour de France because he races on a Spanish team, which missed the cut. But at least he was around to comment on our tour coverage in the studio. Without the tour in his legs, perhaps the 28 years old Yorkshireman will be that much fresher as he tries to repeat his win in last year's Tour of Britain. He's always enjoyed, if that's the word, a close rivalry with Joey McLaughlin, highlighted here in last year's Kellogg's Tour, where he led the race from start to finish to win it by just 18 seconds. Elliot's late decision to defend his title is good news for us and certainly bad news for them. Joey McLaughlin is the chirpy liver Pudlian who has the heart of a lion. Pain to him is to be endured, while victories are to be savoured. McLaughlin won the first Tour of Britain two years ago by just five seconds from the Dutchman Stephen Rooks. Once again, the race visits Liverpool, and once again, McLaughlin will try to oblige his many Scouse admirers. 
Like Malcolm Elliott, Joey was our studio guest during the Tour de France, but his reasons were different, and he was recovering from a knee operation which, hopefully, has ended once and for all a troublesome injury. This will allow Joey to renew his rivalry with Elliott and may the sparring be friendly but fun as the two previous tour winners meet in combat once again. Glasgow's quiet man of world cycling is Robert Miller. Quiet, that is, until he sits on a bike and then the transformation is obvious. This year, Miller has warmed British hearts with a superb Tour de France, finishing an excellent 10th place overall. Miller was there, witnessing the finest race at the closest of quarters and making history himself as well. With Spain's Pedro Delgado alongside him, Miller led the Tour de France across the Pyrenees and over three of the highest mountains. Just one remained at Super Bagnier. Miller comes a long way round on his shoulder. Robert Miller is going to go, and Miller's got him. Robert Miller is going to win the stage. He's chosen his spot on schedule. Delgado has nothing left in those legs. Robert Miller has died twice. He's come back, and he's won the stage on top of the mountain. Absolutely wonderful for Robert Miller. And it wasn't just wonderful for Robert either. We had all witnessed one of the great adventures in the Tour de France, and that night Miller enjoyed the most pleasant of dreams that hours before had become reality. Mr. Ireland himself, Sean Kelly, is another rider enjoying a return to the good old days. And in this year's tour, he also wrote a piece of the history himself. The green jersey given to the winner on points was won by him for a record fourth time. It's a record that will stand to the end of this century and probably even further than that. Kelly has a fine ally on his team in countryman Martin Early, a rider who keeps on telling us he's not very good, but keeps on landing some tremendous victories. His best came in the Tour de France this year on the road to Pau, when he broke clear in the streets of the French city. Round the last bend now, and it's all very casual for Martin Early. There's not even the need to hurry. This is a marvellous victory. He's won a stage in the Tour of Italy before. Martin Early wins for Ireland here in Pau. Well, it's, it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. We all agreed, and he's still racing well enough to be a good favourite to win the Tour of Britain. No one would be surprised if he did. Another likely winner is the rugged Aussie Phil Anderson, who has returned to the top this season with a stage win in the Tour of Italy and victory in the Tour of Romandie in Switzerland. Anderson enjoyed his Tour de France but failed to get a stage win. He finished 38th overall. In the past, Phil has won classic races and led the Tour de France. And despite his long hair, he's in there somewhere and ready to win again. This has not been the best season for the stars of the French Z Peugeot team, so thank heavens for Robert Miller. But one of the riders who's desperate for a good performance is Ronan Ponsec, who slumped to 58th in the Tour de France. He may choose the British countryside to mark his return to the top and keep his team together, as there are rumours now it may break up at the end of the season. Americans have always produced colourful characters and there's none more pleasant to know than Davis Finney who survived an horrific crash in last year's Liège-Baston-Liège when Finney collided with the back of a race car that had stopped to service another rider. Finney received terrible facial injuries but I'm delighted to say he's recovered completely. Davis has been injured this year too but he's back to form now hoping to build on his two previous stage wins in the Tour de France. So, those are our tips for the top, but there are many good outsiders. Expected to be locked in rivalry are Chris Lillywhite, winner of three King of the Mountains titles in other races, and Moro Gianetti, last year's winner of the title in this event. They'll clash again on the mountain tops, hopefully not quite so physically as they did here. It's a great field altogether and one to look forward to. Well, I'm certainly making no predictions. You pick your own winners from that little lot. With us now, race director Alan Rushton. Alan, congratulations on another super field, but the problems, the headaches start now, now that they're with you. Well, they do in a way, but all the planning has taken a year or more to get together, and we, we have things under control, we're pretty happy. We have got super cooperation from the uh, police in Scotland and through England and Wales, and also from all the town councils. We're going through town councils, parish councils, they've all put their bit in to actually um, get the course chosen well and, and good control on, on the city centres uh, where we finish the, each stage. 
And then this year, of course, uh, if we do have any crashes or cuts and grazes, we have a complete helicopter service uh, to get people in and out. So uh, I think we've got things well catered for. Are we likely to see any of these tomorrow, Alan, on the opening time trial? Are these something of a new innovation in cycling, of course, the triathlete handlebar, used to great effect by Sean Yates in Paris on the Tour de France, and more especially Greg LeMond. That's right. Well, they've certainly made their mark, but I'm not sure we'll see too many tomorrow because it's, it's basically to streamline the rider uh, in a longer distance time trial, and tomorrow's a short, sharp uphill. Uh, so they'll be pulling, I think, on conventional bars to get up there. OK, and before we go on and talk more about the race, let's just pause for a moment, shall we? Cast our minds back to one of the great sporting jousts, Fignon and Le Monde in Paris on the Tour de France. So the Tour de France comes out to the climax, the climax it's always threatened it would be. These two men have been Siamese twins throughout the race. Now the cord is broken and it looks like Greg Le Monde might, but look at the finish by Fignon. They're all turned off, it's going to be close, 27.47, he must do. The clock is counting down, so are the metres to the line. This is going to be incredible. Fignon is bouncing off the barriers here. He's lost the Tour de France. The crowd has realised it. Laurent Fignon has lost the Tour de France. A right on the line as he comes over. 55 seconds is countdown. He has lost the Tour de France by eight seconds. Can you believe that? Laurent Fignon has lost the Tour and Greg Lamont has won it. Incredible, wasn't it? And it gets better every time you see it. One of the truly great sporting moments. Coming up, we're going to be taking a look at the qualities you need to become a top pro cyclist, looking at this year's route on the Tour of Britain and talking to Robert Miller. Stay with us. So from one super fit athlete to nothing of the sort, Phil Liggett, who's going to guide us around the route now and by the look of him here, I think he's probably cycled all of it. Oh, no, not all of it, Richard, but just the last half mile of this climb here in Mid Wales. It's called the Tumble. It's been used before in the Kellogg's Tour, and it's not the high spot of this year's race, but my heart will verify it's certainly the steepest. It's an absolute brute. But you know, what better way than to understand the pain and the courage of professional bike riders than getting out and have a go at it yourself? And believe me, it's tough. Well, of course, the race doesn't start here. This is only day five in the Kellogg's Tour. It starts with you up in Dundee, and it starts with a prologue time trial. And what a painful start it is in the city of Discovery. A steep climb known locally as the law will really hurt the riders in this opening short prologue time trial. But the rewards for the winner will be the first yellow jersey. The next day, all the beauty of Scotland can be seen on the long ride from Dundee down to the city of Glasgow. Scotland really is a most beautiful country. The riders, though, today may not appreciate it. Then the riders say goodbye to Scotland, not by bicycle, but by train. They travel down from Glasgow to Manchester's Piccadilly Station. Then the two footballing cities of Manchester and Liverpool are linked together by a ride which takes them over the Lancashire moorland and into the city centre. The sights of the city are there for all to see. The riders then cross over the Mersey and head out to the city of Chester, where the Kellogg's Tour visits for the first time. It makes its start from here, heading down to Birmingham, Britain's second city, and the city that's always welcomed the Kellogg's Tour. Day five of the race offers the climbing specialists their last opportunity, but what a day it is for them. Five major climbs linking the city of Birmingham with the city of Cardiff, and the steepest of them all, the first category climb of the Tumble. Once the hills are behind them, it's through the castle grounds and onto the finish in the city centre. Overnight, the riders will stay in the city, then it's off down the M4 to the city of Westminster for the grand finale. As usual, it's a 62 and a half mile circuit race around some of the world's most famous roads. And as usual, it'll give us a great finish. Well, that's the route, and in just six days, the riders will have traveled from Dundee, almost 500 miles down to the city of Westminster. But it could be that the decisive mood will come on day five, right here, on the climb of the tumble. This is the only first category climb, and it's a tough one. The climb starts right down by the Monmouthshire and Brecon Canal in the village of Flanfoyce, not far outside Abergavenny. It then herpins through trees on very narrow roads, and it's very, very steep. And once you come out of the trees, just as you come round the bend down there, you come into this barren scenery, and the wind always seems to hit you right on the nose. Once over the top of the climb, it's then down through the valleys towards the finish. 
Well, if you can remember two years ago when the first Kellogg's Tour of Britain came along, this climb was included. And it was on the climb then that Joey McLaughlin from Liverpool showed us all about the courage of a professional bike rider. Oh, and this is hurting Joey McLaughlin. Look at the face of this man with so much courage. He was out for most of this season with a very, very serious knee injury. And he was telling me only the other day that they stuck a six inch needle right into it and blew it up for a week while they searched for a cyst inside the knee and there wasn't one. And now here he is back on form and in with a chance. Oh, and his legs there as his gears quite clearly locked up. And that surely described to you fully the steepness of the slope of the tumble. And that mistake by McLaughlin who is in all sorts of trouble here at the moment, has given Stephen Rooks a slight lead. But the lead wasn't enough. Joey McLaughlin gritted his teeth and he chased the race leader, Stephen Rooks, down the mountain and he caught him. McLaughlin knew then that to win the Kellogg's Tour, he had to finish in the first three and snatch a time bonus at the finish in the city of Cardiff in the Castle Grounds. He looked to his teammate Malcolm Elliott, who led him out. McLaughlin got third place and that was good enough to give him the overall race lead and, of course, the yellow jersey. That was good enough, too, to give him final victory in the city of Westminster next day. Well, for those of you who want to know about the tumble and what gears I've used on the climb, I've told you about the mountain, now I'll tell you about the gears. Down here are the gears that one would climb up a climb as steep as this. For me, I'm using a bottom sprocket of 23 tooth and a front inner chain wheel of 42. Now, you know, that's no good if you're a professional bike rider because speed up the mountains is of an essence and you've got to be strong as well. So the pro bike riders will use probably a 20 tooth gear. And you know, Richard, if I'd have used a 20 tooth gear today, I would have walked all the way up. The tumble is a very steep climb. And I recommend if you're coming out to watch the Kellogg's tour, you perhaps come here and watch it on day five, heading down to Cardiff. But I don't recommend, Richard, you come by bike. And if you want to join us at the top of the tumble, well, it's on the B4246 near the village of Llanfoist in Wales. And we'll be there on Saturday at two o'clock. Ish. Actually, Alan, that's a great place to watch the race, isn't it? It is. The atmosphere is terrific on, on that climb like that, it, Britain at its best, really. And also, we have the Kefili Mountain coming straight afterwards. And for those people who are there uh, before the race and want to get into the atmosphere, we have the publicity cavalcade coming through, and that's giving away things to the children, lots of uh, stickers and flags and that kind of thing. Um, but it must be careful not to let, let them run out into the road when the race goes by. Mm. Also this year, for the first time, we've got a telephone number which viewers can call. The number's on screen now. And this will give you an update on the precise race route, race route each day. Great. Alan, thanks for joining us. OK, thank you. More details, incidentally, about the route and the race coming up at the end of this programme. Now, if you are on the roadsides, one rider to look out for in the peloton, Scotland's Robert Miller who delighted us all with a terrific stage win in this year's Tour de France. High in the Pyrenees now, one of the greatest battles we've seen in the Tour de France for years being fought out. As we work, work our way, the hotel on the far right of our picture, that is where the finishing line is. Now, will Delgado find the strength to go once again, or can Robert Miller just lift himself once more? 200 metres to go. The Delgado goes for the gears, he slips it up once. Miller comes a long way round on his shoulder. Robert Miller is going to go, and Miller's got it. Robert Miller is going to win the stage. He's chosen his spot on schedule. Delgado has nothing left in those legs. Robert Miller has died twice. He's come back, and he's won the stage on top of the mountain. Absolutely wonderful for Robert Miller, and richly deserved as well. Well, Robert, Dundee sees the start of this year's Kellogg's Tour of Britain. It must be exhilarating to race in front of the home crowd again. Yeah, it's good to ride in Scotland. It's a, it's a great occasion to ride in front of uh, your own people. And I hope to do, I can do my best to try and please them a bit. Well, the prologue is a hard hill climb. It's not quite as hard as that uh, hill that you won the stage in the Tour of France this year, but uh, it's up in the streets of Dundee. Is that going to be on your agenda to win? Uh, it's not really my speciality being at such a short, short hill, but uh, I should finish in the first ten, I hope, and not lose too much time. Well, the next day it's racing home to Glasgow. After, uh, after your performances in the Tour de France this year, it should be quite a reception. Yeah, I hope so. I hope a lot of people will come out and uh, see what's left of me. <laughs> well, the rest of the tour takes us through the countryside of England and Wales. What's going to be your priority in this Tour of Britain? Will it be the yellow jersey for your Z Persia team or the King of the Mountains? I think we're trying to uh, 
played so that that I'm in the front most of the time. But uh, if one of the other guys in the team uh, gets in a position uh, where he can win, then uh, we'll maybe right for him. But it, it's difficult to say what's going to happen before the start because it's always a kind of nervous race and uh, you never know what's going to go. Well, Robert, it's great to have you back in Britain again and good luck for the rest of the week. Thanks, good to be here. And it's great to have him too, Robert Miller talking with Paul Schoen. Good luck to everybody on the 500 mile trip between here and London. It's free on the roads, remember, do try and join us. Details of the route, programme times and that special phone number coming up. And you know, it doesn't matter which country these riders are racing in, winning is important. It's a terrible feeling if you don't. It's great if you do. Grazie, grazie. Cazzo, ma tu ora devi visto.